Alright, it's time to play Lewis Rossman on cheap shitty hardware with no manuals and probably fail. Uh, this is a HP ProBook 6570B, I believe. Uh, it's some relatively modern uh, third generation i5 based thing which has received some uh, rather violent disassembly after being returned to a place after it's failed. Uh, I have no idea what's wrong with it, but we have to start by taking care of that and uh, making an attempt to maintain the cooler by comparing it on to see what the actual original issue is. Uh, beyond that failure, uh, the failure of the tech to install the cooler non-violently that is, it actually looks quite fresh. It doesn't look liquid damaged, uh, nor does it look mechanically damaged. So. We're likely looking at some like warranty return thing where it's just randomly failed uh, for no real obvious reason, making it perhaps a bit unlikely that we'll get it up and running again. But hey, what's this channel about? It's not for trying. So that's that out of the way, and yeah, there really is no trace of liquid damage over there, certainly not, and I can't really spot anything. Obviously exploded either. So let's see if we can just kind of yeah, that's not gonna go there. Just have to give this some manhandling. It's tough love, baby. Ah, that's straight enough for me. There's perhaps might be a bit of a bottleneck going on there though, since it's all crushed and horrible, but uh, it's going to be good enough to cool the CPU for testing purposes anyway. If I get this thing working out and it doesn't work, I'll just order a new heatsink. They're, they're going to be plentiful on eBay. A uh, bit of RAM in there. And we should be good for a test run. All right, let's see what she does with a cheap knockoff HP charger. And it does power on. That gives us image. <laughs> Okie dokes. So you must check some error. Well, that was anticlimactic. I was expecting flames. System information, what do we have? Uh, warranty start date, uh, 17th of 9th, 2012. CPU, Core i5, 3210M, 2 gigabytes of RAM, which is what I just shoved in there. No battery present. Although I do have that here, perhaps that's the issue. Seems perhaps the LCD has a bit of a marking to it, but that's... That could just be some graphics. Yeah, on the black it looks fine. That certainly is anticlimactic. Is this thing just going to work? Surely there has to be some issue. Now come the flames. 3 watts, 4 watts, is it perhaps not charging the battery? Is that the issue? It says it's charging the battery. If that's the only issue. Yeah, it also says no battery present, although... This thing was drooping wet when I got it, so the battery might just have been... Uh, quite discharged and not really powered on yet. I think I'm just going to let this thing sit for a while and wait for the battery to come back alive. And while we're waiting for that... 0.0375 volts. Yep, that's a very dead CMOS battery, so I'm just going to slap a new one in. Nothing more to it. And let's see if they decided to make that easy or difficult. Ah, uh, welded tabs. A bit annoying. Don't have any tabbed 2032s, I don't believe. Oh well. Uh, the easiest way around this is to just uh, clean up a bog standard 2032 real good. Uh, apply some liberal violence. Let's see. I've done a good job well with this, I must admit. Uh, 
There we go. One harness. Uh, you just crumble these up a bit and apply some shrink wrap. And then you turn on your horrible, broken, old, cheapy D uh, hot air station and jam it in there. That's usually good enough for me. Yes, indeed. Good enough for me. And while we were busy doing that, a computer decided to start charging. And charging at a healthy 50 watts, so the battery even seems to be in reasonable condition. I wonder what the actual issue might be with this machine. If there even was any. Sometimes you happen upon these randomless craft machines where they'll just toss them for no really good reason. Uh, but we still have to put a drive in it and see if we can actually get it to power up into an OS because uh, that could be an issue for all I know. You go in there. Plenty of space. Plenty of space. I must say though, for being a business HP, this thing is uh, disappointingly plasticky. Uh, since we're also missing a wireless card. Uh, since we have. When antennas pre-installed, that's a nice feature, although they've never been equipped since we got the plastic covers there. Uh, let's just see. If we can get to drive in this thing and spin up an OS. Aha! If you've seen my video on the home server of this building recently, I installed Windows 7 on this horrible broken hard drive, and this should have the correct Intel AHCI drivers to boot up, since this is a like one generation newer you know, platform, it sh just should work just fine. So, let's just plop this in there and see if we can just boot straight in. That would be very handy indeed. Alright, the moment of truth is upon us. Let's see what happens. It does spin the drive up. And it's quite clearly recognising it as well. CPU fan is turning, we still... Oh, it should have a Prime 95. Oh, <laughs> there we go, how perfect isn't that? And we're booting right in. So I've got Prime 95 on this thing, so we can test to see if the heatsink is actually working. And because well, there's a fair risk, it might not be performing quite as well as it should anymore. I do wonder what the display on this thing is. It's probably just a... Uh, 1366 by 768 cheapy. Yep. Uh, install your freaking drivers. What's going on? Please allow me to click something. Thank you, yeah, 1366, size 768, nothing exciting. Uh, let's uh, get the uh, temperature sensor up. Prime 95 up. Now we've got audio running by default on Windows 7, 18% available, plugged in charging. This is looking too good to be true. Well, in fact not, I see stuff like this on a relatively regular basis. Well, let's just get Windows Software, Diagnostics, Core Temp from 2013, yeah, it might work. Oh, 40 degrees. Oh, alright. MSHHCI. Right, we got a crash from a hard drive issue, so, <laughs> well, that could be either a computer or... Or it could be the drive, since we know this is not a healthy drive. I should start by just cleaning the contacts. Well, the computer rebooted just fine and hasn't crashed yet. I've been running for a couple of minutes, figured I'd run HD Tune to see if there's some particular spot on the disk which is causing issues. I'm not sure if uh, the uh, UDMA error count has increased. Nope. Oh, that's a bit of an oddity, really. Oh wow, look at this, uh, on, on my server in fixed test video, uh, this start-stop count was like 
1200, now it's 1800. And it's been powered on for, what, minutes? So yeah, there's something really spooky going on with this drive. Seems to be performing quite well, they despite that. That is weird. Could be a bad connection on the PCB. Yeah, those values look uh, pretty normal to me. No real obvious spot where it just dies on there, except for like a couple of peaks when Windows try to do something with the dry wobble test first running, so that's a bit odd. I'm just gonna take the drive apart and re receive a PCB. Maybe, maybe we can get back working as well. Oh yeah, that could very well be an issue. It's one of these cheap house drives which just has tin connectors for the read write heads. That could very well be causing issues, so let's just give it a bit of booze and give it another go. A reasonable chance this drive might just be healthy, suffering some oxidation. By the way, it's always an excellent idea to be working with lots of tiny, small, little screws uh, on top of a computer that's plugged in with a giant lithium battery installed. Alright, time for another go. Well, what do you mean Windows is not activated? Surely my license is valid on the 1st of January 1980. Oh, well, at least this time the start-stop count has just increased by one. So, perhaps it's gotten better, perhaps it hasn't. I guess we'll have to keep an eye on it but the real interesting part right now is how well this is going to handle a bit of load because our temperatures I believe could be a real issue isn't it what 44 degrees unloaded oh, let's see let's give that thermal protection for a bit of a try come on get going Jesus, this is taking forever. What's it doing? It's doing something with a drive and it's taking forever. Although one of the cores is already 66 degrees and we barely start of a test, but if I feel the outlet to air, that's actually a fair amount of warmth coming out of this thing. And Jesus, this drive is so slow, it's just insane. It's just constantly chugging away. Ah, oh, there we go. Restarted Prime 95 and... Oh, that's not too bad, actually. 70 degrees-ish, it's not even enough to turn the uh, fan onto its maximum setting. But it's mm, still a bit unbalanced. A bit nasty. So I'm going to give this heatsink a bit more of a bending and try again. Alright, so if we have a look at a shallow angle here, you can see the heatsink is getting too close to the board and it's kind of tilted that way. So I really want to bend it up like so to get it well up into the path of the airflow from the fan and I really want to kind of beat this corner to uh, press out these horrible wiggles because that's going to provide a I can imagine fair bottleneck for the flu of fluid in there all of the while trying not to puncture the poor thing grunts I could just solder it shut afterwards all right, here we go. See, part of the issue is that the heat tank is touching the PCB there, levering into, leveraging it up a bit to uh, probably provide a fair amount of less pressure on one half of the processor there. So, I'm thinking the best solution is to just bend it along the straight here and then just kind of try and hammer at the edge here to get the wrinkles out, kind of. I'm not really sure, but we're just going to start by giving it an easy little bend along there. Very gingerly. So now we've got a bit of an upwards turning. Let's we'll see how well that's going to fit into the narrative. Yeah, it's better, but now it's hitting the I've run to the computer instead. A bit back on that. There we go. 
that's fitting perfectly so you need to try uh, to deal with that oh I don't like the prospect I'm just gonna try hitting the inner edge of this with a ball peen hammer and see what happens well I don't have my ball peen hammer at hand so we're just gonna use a normal hammer and just kind of bash it see what happens Uh, that actually seems to be working quite well. Uh, it isn't uh, smoothing out the wrinkles, but uh, it is uh, making this part co quite considerably fatter. Just ever so slightly, giving it a bit more girth. If that's what we want. Hmm. So if I try and do the same thing around there, I think we might be golden. Or rather, copper. Yeah, that seems to have done a reasonable job. We've certainly provided a bit of an alternate path for the fluid to travel past the pinch there. And there. Oh, more than anything. Yeah, I think I'm going to be happy with that. Put this back together, apply heat paste a bit more properly. And we'll try it again. Oh, and let's not forget to get all that dusty crap out of that. Good as new. And I don't much fancy the look of this pad, which has been lying exposed for so long. So I'm just going to cut myself a new one. And that's good as new as well. Alright, that's starting to look pretty good, so let's give it the same test and see if we've made any improvements. And our idle temps are now at least down below the 40, so let's give it some prime numbers to think about and see if it changes. Yeah, that is a considerable improvement. It's no longer jumping straight up to 60 plus as it was before. And when it does that sudden jump when you apply a load, it uh, means you have a poor connection between your cores and uh, the actual heatsink part of a heatsink. Uh, I'm not sure if it's mostly because we had a ba bad connection to between the processor and the base of a heatsink, or because the heatsink was uh, more bent. I wager it was probably more to do with the fact that it just wasn't making proper contact with a processor. That we were seeing giant temps before, but now it's certainly in the acceptable range you'd want to see in a normal computer. So now all that remains is trying to figure out what the bloody hell is wrong with this machine. Well, I've been running both a processor and a hard drive stress test for this thing for about an hour now, and uh, it's showing no signs of failing. So I'm just going to call this a fix, I guess. Uh, seems this computer didn't really have any issues. To begin with, save for the dead CMOS battery and the bent out of shape heatsink. Who knows, perhaps that was the actual issue. Someone just bent the heatsink up and. I don't know. Somehow this has ended up on the scrap heap. But I'm just gonna put a wireless card in it because that was missing. And uh, probably give this thing away to someone. Ah, and there we go. I figured out that the easiest way to mount the battery of its ugly heat shrink. Uh, wrapping was to just to put a bit of cat5 on the lead and move it somewhere else. Well, I've now left the computer running stress tests overnight on practically everything. CPU, RAM, hard drives and it's even been playing all the EV blog videos in the background while doing so and it hasn't come up with a single issue. So, at this stage I'm quite confident in calling this a healthy computer. The, the only thing I've noticed that the hard drive has collected a few more start stops which it really shouldn't while being under load. So there's still something wrong with the drive. Well, we already knew that. But the computer itself, 
It's just doing fine. This is a working, workable laptop. Nothing wrong with it. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.